Hello everyone, my name is Diego Rodriguez. I am a research specialist under the supervision of Dr. Hans Stein, and today I will talk about research that I conduct during my master program at the university. So the study we conduct was about the effect of extrusion on nutrient and energy digestibility in cereal grains fed to growing pigs. This is the outline of this presentation. First, I will talk briefly about the extrusion process and the effect that may have feed ingredients when they are extruded. Then I will move on to the materials of methods of this study that we conduct, showing some results, and by the end, some conclusions. Extrusion is a feed technology that is commonly used in the pet food industry or aquafit. It is known that about 95% of pet food is extruded. However, this technology is not extensively used in swine industry because of the high cost of this process. The purpose of extrusion is mainly cooking followed by an expansion of the raw material and therefore this process may facilitate enzymatic activity in the digestive tract. This process combines the use of moisture and heat during the condition step of the raw material and after that by combining mechanical forces such as pressure and friction the raw material will be extruded. After this process, after the material was extruded, there is the last step, which is the dry and cooler of the material. And this process may have done in the right temperature and time to avoid retrogradation of starch, meaning that we are forming resistant starch, which is going to be difficult to absorb in the small intestine, and therefore it will be fermented in the hindgut. The effect of extrusion process in fit ingredients in terms of handling properties are that the bulk density may be reduced, which is not desired because of the store efficiency. That means that we will store less feed in the same volume. Also, due to the high temperature that is used during the extrusion process, there is a reduction of microorganisms that could be present in the feed ingredients. In terms of digestibility of nutrient, it has been reported an increase in star gelatinization after the extrusion process. To understand a little bit better what is star gelatinization, first, starch is a polysaccharide which is the main energy reserve in plant and it is usually present in high content in cereal grains. It is composed for a polymer of glucose that could form linear change of glucose to form amylose or a branch chain to form amylopectin. Usually, cereal grains are composed for about 25 to 30 percent of amylose and to 70 to 75 percent of amylopectin. The first physical change in the starch granules when it is exposed to heat and moisture is that the amylose crystallinity starts to break up and the granule starts swelling until it reaches a point when the amylose starts diffusing out of the granule, forming a gel around the particle and leaving most of the amylopectin inside of the starch granule. So this process may increase the viscosity of the ingredient and make the starch more digestible, and that is because amylose is out of the particle and it gets easier and more accessible to the digestible enzymes. By having an increase in starch gelatinization, starch digestibility will be increased as well. Also, it's been reported that by extrusion process, energy digestibility will be increased. On the other hand, the effect of extrusion in amino acid digestibility is not constant because of the variability in the temperatures and time that is used during the extrusion process. And that is because high temperatures may increase the naturation of protein, especially the amino acid lysine due to the Mylar reaction. Therefore, the objective of this study were to test the hypothesis that the extrusion of cereal grains may increase ileal digestibility of amino acid and starch, as well as an increase in the apparent total tract digestibility of fiber and gross energy, and also an increase in the concentration of digestible and metabolizable energy. Now, let's move on into the materials and methods of this study. For this study, we utilized three different cereal grains corn, wheat, and sorghum that were ground to have a particle size of around 500 microns and each grain was divided into two batches. So the first batch was used without any further process whereas the second batch was extruded. 
Therefore, we had six different treatments for this study. To test our hypothesis, we conduct two different experiments. The first experiment was to determine the effect of extrusion in amino acid digestibility, and the second experiment was to determine the effect of extrusion in nutrient digestibility. For the fixed experiment, we utilized seven cannulated barrels with an initial body weight of 14 kilos, and for this experiment, we formulate six different diets containing around 93% of inclusion of one of the each cereal grains as the only source of amino acid. Also for this experiment, we formulate a nitrogen-free diet to determine the basal endogenous losses of amino acid from the pig. For the second experiment, we utilize 48 growing barrels with an initial body weight of around 15 kilos. And for this experiment, we formulate six diets containing around 97% of inclusion of one of the each cereal grains as the only source of energy. Now, let's move on into the results for this study. Before I continue with this presentation, I will set up the slides that I'm going to use for the most part of this presentation. In blue colors, corn will be represented, wheat will be represented in orange colors, and sorghum will be represented in green colors, where the dark colors will be the cereal grains that were used with no extrusion, and the light color will be the cereal grains that were extruded. Cereal grains that were not extruded had a moisture content of around 12%, but after extrusion, there was a reduction of moisture content in all cereal grains. This effect was expected due to the dry process that is done during the last part of extrusion. For this reason, I will present the data based on 88% of dry matter so we can observe more accurate the difference between the cereal grains that were extruded or not extruded. Now we are looking at the effect of extrusion in fiber. Neutral detented fiber in corn, wheat, and sorghum were about 8 to 12 percent, whereas less NDF was analyzed in the extruded cereal grains. Similar trend was observed for the acid detented fiber. Non-extruded cereal grains had greater ADF concentration compared with extruded cereal grains. This means that the most fermentable part of the fiber in the three cereal grains were solubilized, and therefore the less fermentable part of the fiber was left in the cereal grains after the extrusion. In terms of protein quality, we analyzed crude protein and it was observed that there was no reduction of crude protein after the extrusion process. However, because of the heat treatment during extrusion, we wanted to see if there was a damage in amino acid so we calculate the lysine to crude protein ratio to observe if there was any damage of lysine due to the mylar reaction, and it was observed that the lysine to crude protein ratio did not change after the extrusion process. That means that the extrusion in this case was performed in a good quality. Of course, we have to look at the gelatinization of the starch because the main purpose of extrusion is the starch gelatinization. We observed that the total starch in the three cereal grains was about 60%, which it was expected based on the literature. And among the total starch of each cereal grain, we observed that less than 10% of that starch was gelatinized before extrusion process. However, with similar concentration of starch, the extruded cereal grain had more gelatinized starch and we observed that the total starch that was gelatinized was more than 90% of the total starch. Now we are looking at the gross energy in cereal grains, and we observed that there was an increase in gross energy in all three cereal grains. That may be because after the extrusion process, the primary structure of the particles was changed due to the expansion of the material, and therefore more gross energy was analyzed. Let's move on into the digestibility part. Before that, let me also set up the slides. So from now to the end of this presentation, non-extruded cereal grain will be represented in blue bars and extruded cereal grains will be represented in orange bar. The apparent ileal digestibility of a starch, we observed that there was no interaction between extrusion and the cereal grains. However, the AID of a starch in non-extruded cereal grain was about 
and by extruding, the AID of starch increased almost up to 99%. And this may be explained because of the increase in starch gelatinization of the cereal grain. There was an interaction for the standardized ileal digestibility of crude protein between cereal grains and extrusion process, and we observed that the corn that was extruded has greater SID of crude protein compared with the non-extruded corn. However, this effect was not observed for wheat and sorghum. We also wanted to see the effect of the individual amino acids, and we observed that for digestibility of lysine, there was no interaction between cereal grains and extrusion process. However, after extrusion, there was an increase in SID of lysine in all three cereal grains compared with non-extruded cereal grain. And for this case, we expect that a reduction of lysine due to the mylar reaction and the high temperature that is usually used during extrusion process. However, in this case, there was no any damage of lysine after the extrusion process. In terms of digestibility of methionine, we observed that there was an interaction between cereal grain and extrusion. And it was observed that the extruded corn had greater methionine digestibility compared with non-extruded corn. But there was no any difference after the extrusion for wheat and sorghum. The same trend was observed for threonine and tryptophan digestibility, and we observed that there was an interaction between cereal grain and extrusion process, and it was observed that there was an increase in digestibility of these two amino acids for extruded corn compared with non-extruded corn. However, there were no any difference for wheat and sorghum after the extrusion process. Now we are looking at the apparent total tract digestibility of gross energy, and we observed that there was an interaction between extrusion and cereal grain, and it was observed that after the extrusion process, there was no difference for extruded wheat or non-extruded wheat. However, there was an increase in apparent total tract digestibility of gross energy after the extrusion process in corn and sorghum. There was an interaction between cereal grains and extrusion that digestible energy was increased by extrusion, but the degree of increment was less in wheat compared with sorghum or corn. And the same was observed for metabolizable energy that the effect of extrusion was greater in corn and sorghum compared with wheat. So from this data, more of the effect that was present was found in corn and sorghum in terms of digestibility of amino acid and energy and the concentration of digestible and metabolizable energy compared with the effect of extrusion in wheat. Based on the literature, the structure of wheat in terms of starch and fiber is more complex compared with the structure in corn and sorghum. And that means that during the extrusion process and the process of expansion of the raw material, it is more difficult to have an effect in a starch due to the organization of the starch inside of the kernel of the wheat. Now we are looking in terms of digestibility of fiber, and we observed that there was no interaction between cereal grain and extrusion. However, by extrusion of cereal grains, the apparent total tract digestibility of ADF decreased in all three cereal grains. In terms of digestibility of NDF, we observed that there was an interaction between cereal grain and extrusion, and we observed that the digestibility of NDF in wheat decreased after the extrusion process compared with the non-extruded wheat. And this reduction in digestibility of fiber may be because after the extrusion process, the most fermentable part of the fiber was solubilized, and therefore, the less fermentable was remaining in the cereal grains, and therefore, there is a reduction of fiber digestibility. So now, let's move on into the conclusion for this study. After this study, we can conclude that concentration of fiber may be reduced after the extrusion process. However, concentration of gross energy may be increased after the extrusion process, and in this particular experiment, we can conclude that extrusion process did not change the concentration of amino acid in cereal grains. In terms of digestibility, we can conclude that apparent ileal digestibility of starch 
Standard Ileal Digestibility of Amino Acid, Apparent Total Track Digestibility of Energy, and Concentration of Digestible and Metabolizable Energy was increased after the extrusion process. However, this increase depends on the type of the cereal grains and also it depends on the composition of starch in fiber in cereal grains. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. And if you would like to know more about our work in our lab, you can visit our website. Thank you.